Welcome to In An Instant, my name is Ben, and today we're coming to you with a very special episode in a very special place. We are here in Enschede, in the Netherlands, at the Polaroid factory. We're in the mothership where the magic gets made. And speaking of magic, a very magical film was just created by accident by a mad scientist named Brian who works at Polaroid and incidentally created something called Reclaimed Blue. This is a new type of film that is somewhat reminiscent of cyanotypes. It's a completely new offering and something that Polaroid hasn't done in many years. Today we're going to experiment with the film, see how it's made, talk Brian's ear off. So without further ado, let's do it. A kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Inside the last remaining Polaroid factory on planet Earth, knobs, arms, and gears are turning. Machines hum with the sweet sound of film creation. Dizzying volumes of fresh foiled Polaroid packs are coming together piece by piece as they prepare for their lives as artistic canvases for the world. At the risk of sounding overdramatic, these rhythmic thonks, boinks, clanks, and kerplunks are quite literally the beating heart of Polaroid film. But like all inorganic matter being compared to anatomy, there exist other organs vital to the formulation of this beloved artistic medium, housed in the very same factory. Only a few meters away, we find chemists plugging away at improving and modifying the immensely complicated chemical processes that constitute a Polaroid picture. It is here that we meet Brian, an undeniably winning individual with a smile that could launch a thousand ships. So we can improve the colors. Indeed, yes, yes we can. Yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> Brian is the inventor of an entirely new type of Polaroid film, Reclaim Blue. This blue and white cyanoesque emulsion was discovered by accident in a series of tests to improve color chemistry. I can explain. Um, typical day of mine is uh, trying to improve, improve colors, performance, uh, you name it, we are working on it. What we did is we took like 100 chemicals or more even, tried to put it in the color system, see mm -hmm. if we can see any benefits, uh, hot room, cold room, everything, everyone feels. Not the results we were looking for, let's say that. Um, then we had another experiment about adding black and white chemicals to the color system. Interesting. One by one. Maybe not the result they wanted, but this fluke creation resulting from mixing components of black and white chemistry with their color chemistry formed a vibrant blue variation of their color film. Though these tests were not intended for the development of standalone products, the results of these numerous experiments were revisited some time later with a new lens. Perhaps these results failed to improve the color chemistry, but they could work as special edition films. This is when Brian began the refinement process of solidifying Reclaim Blue as a stable and widely producible product. And now, in an instant presents Polaroid Film Design with Brian and Ben. Polaroid's color film negative, the brown sheet you see on an unexposed Polaroid image, consists of 12 distinct layers, including three photosensitive silver halide layers of red, green, and blue, and three dye layers of cyan, magenta, and yellow. How these layers interact with one another and the developer pace during an exposure is the most critical component of the resulting color rendition of the image. So let's say I have a camera in my hand, I press the button, and right in front of me is, let's say, a blue flower, something like that. So if I look through the lens, I will press the button, make the picture, you will make an exposure on your negative. But what will really happen is the blue light from the blue flower will get through the lens. It will reach the blue silver halide sensitive crystals and make an exposure in this area. Next what will happen, the frame will go through the rollers, so the paste will be spread. In between the sheet and the negative, the developer from the paste will react with the exposed blue silver halide crystals. As a result of only blue crystals being exposed to light in Reclaim Blue, the paired yellow dye layer is immobilized and left behind. See ya. The red and green photosensitive layers are also not exposed, allowing just the blue and magenta dyes to diffuse through the film and result in a blue image. This is a much different process than the other blue film Polaroid released in 2021, Duochrome Blue. If you have the Duochrome Blue, we use the full black and white system. Mm -hmm. So negative, positive, and the base is black and white. And with Reclaim Blue, we use the color system. So we don't add one dye. That's what we typically do at Duochromes. Uh, for this one, it's real chemistry. We added one chemical to our whole color system. And we use the whole color system with one chemical new. So real chemistry is going on. And if you compare it with the Duochrome Blue, 
the dual chrome, you can see that normally the, the black wood is not really black. It's right, right, right. More blue. Yeah. If you look at the reclaimed blue, the black is still really black. Yeah. And yeah, th that's the main difference is that we are using a whole different system. Every day, Brian and his team refine these processes by mixing small batch chemical paste. By contrast, the chemical mixing for production film happens on gigantic scales. But Brian walked me through this micro operation of mixing paste and manually making film units for testing and refinement. So we typically made a lot of paste and we want also to see a real picture of a person, how that looks, because we can measure it. But our picture tells more than yeah, just a measurement. Sure. So we do that sideways, of side by side. Um, how we do it is we make a beaker on lap scale, 200 grams of paste. Then we fill by hand. Uh, you would, normally a production pot will be completely sealed off, but now we have like a tiny hole where we can fit in a needle. Then it's still open, so it will be sensitive to oxidation. Right. But then we just seal the pot. Then. We will need some positive and negative, of course. Sure. So we will cut it down at the right size, then add it to the pot. And then finally, we take a camera, which has no, yeah, we call it a, a picker. Sure. So it won't slide the picture out. So then we make a picture, let's say, of you. We will put it in between two rollers, which will spread the paste equally. Wow, to see the yep. final thing. And being used by photographers, that is such a unique and almost incomparable professional experience for you. Yeah, I like totally people agree. are creating art with the material that you're essentially inventing, yep. which is amazing. Yeah, I totally so, agree. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> oh my gosh, Brian's a mensch. Being inside the lab and seeing this golden child work his magic is stunning. It's incredible to see that the millions of films spreading across the world start as these handmade babies. That being said, it's one thing to see how the sausage is made, but how does that sausage taste? I now headed to a shipyard two hours west of Enschede in Amsterdam with some of the Polaroid team, where I not only wanted to shoot a bit more practically with the film, but also see how it performs under duress. This is an experimental film emulsion after all, and while the out of camera images glow a gorgeous ocean blue, there's much to be said about manipulating it further. One of the things I'm curious about with Reclaim Blue is how it peels open because of course we need to start destroying these images to really know what they're made of. Um, we've taken two images here and one of them is our control group and one of them is our test subject. We are going to cut it open with a sharp blade. With black and white film, it's, uh, this will create a transparency. If you're careful and you peel the Polaroid apart, um, you can create a transparency, you can hold up to the light and the light will shine through it and it's gorgeous. Uh, but this is a color film emulsion, not a black and white emulsion. So we'll see what happens. You can tell now that we've done this that it's already tinting dramatically. We have a very like clear white highlight we're working with on this, and this is already, as we sort of look at it, turning. This film apparently is very good for emulsion lifts, and you can see that the emulsion is almost, I could just peel this off with my fingers right now. All right, I'm gonna try to not mess this up anymore because I actually really like this. I love the results from the deconstruction of this film. A few strange experiments included rolling the film immediately after exposure, which chaotically separated the negative and positive layers, resulting in some serious funk that introduces yellow from the negative back into the mix. We also lit it on fire because why not? As one might expect, absolutely torching a film results in a film that appears to have been on fire at one point. So not much insight there. Although the peeling open of the film was my favorite test and the roughed edge triptych I produced gives a lot of that cyanotype flavor that I was sensing from Reclaim Blue. Overall, the film performs fairly normally in camera, although contrast deepens over the span of about 20 minutes or so, which can result in occasional underexposure. I tended to not adjust exposure compensation too much, but knew in situations with much deeper shadow, it would be smart to overexpose a bit to preserve tonal information. Okay, so not to rub it in, but the final thing we are doing today, and the thing we're gonna send you out with is, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, we're taking an eight by 10 reclaimed blue photo. Now the reason I feel like I'm a little bit rubbing it in is that this is not a product that's going to be offered in any capacity. In fact, I don't think that there's ever been, at least in the modern Polaroid era, an eight by 10 film emulsion that wasn't black and white or color. So this is like 
the, a variation of Polaroid that doesn't exist otherwise. Um, so it's an extreme honor. Ruben's gonna take my photo right now. Um, and I cannot wait to see the reclaimed blue emulsion that we're all very much falling in love with uh, in this amazing format with these amazing cameras and the big ass film. Ruben is currently composing an eight by 10 portrait on this rail eight by 10 camera. I have to stay perfectly still because the plane of focus is so narrow in 8x10 that any motion on the z-axis could ruin the shot. Do you want to press the button? It'd be my honor. That's the magic sound yep. when you hear that it's... Yeah, when you hear kerplunk, yeah. it's always good. Go. And now it's already starting to develop. Yeah, what? the heck? Yeah, That's really it's interesting. Fast. It's really fast. So it's faster is, than normal film. Is, so Reclaim Blue develops faster than well, other... The, I can't uh, believe we're, we're only just now talking about this. Is that like the end of the episode? But <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's not um, as fast as a uh, color film, but the, the way the image appears is faster than normal film. But the entire process of the development takes longer. Yeah, this is going to be great. Oh, that's a ripper. Yep. That's an absolute shredder. Yep. Yep, that'll Great. do. That'll do. Great. That'll do. Thank you for watching In An Instant. Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more reviews, shoots, journeys to Polaroid, and all things instant. Bye. Yes, exactly. You can use this hand to press this button. And you will see There's the like button. batches of experimental film in this fridge. And now it will release yeah. And so fruit. This place is insane. No problem.